This is another My View TV exclusive. Please remember to hit the notification bell, like, share, and subscribe. I don't bring nobody forward in your future for me. Everything where you see up my natural talent. Let me tell you something. You see, when you know what to please the audience with, it's simple, me. Why go on, my people? Hope everybody is okay. Hope everybody is all right. Me not see why every day me need to come out and come tell them the same thing. Take on a time on the road. But since you don't want to hear, just know some you read about when I make people know see a give on the give on the life. Yes, that shouldn't dash on the life. You don't like life. You don't like life. You don't like you three points. You just decide, say, watch another man. Me have up on the road today, me have a drive fast, and me now go back home. That is when I like, no? So here what? Me can tell the people that I go on. The police has confirmed that the driver of the Toyota Axiom motor car, who was hospitalized following a two-vehicle crash on the accident prone spur tree main road yesterday morning, has died. Yes, people, him dead, dead, dead. Report that at about 11 a.m. he lost control of the vehicle while traveling down the hill and collided with a train tractor that was heading in the opposite direction. An eyewitness told our news team that the road was wet when the accident occurred. You see, no for them can't drive. A steer alone, them can't steer. So guess who me blame? Me blame the people that the depot who are selling the license. Yes, the people that are the depot who are selling the license. Or them me blame. The injured driver was taken from the car and rushed to the Mandeville Regional Hospital where he later succumbs to his injury. Yes, people. This time and only this time, them the came got the hospital. Yes, I have time then. But let me tell you something. From them take him out of the camera, you know, so them black came up there and them didn't get pronounced. Me be honest with you know. Because from see how them pull the body out of the car, me know say it's a dead body that. Me be honest with you know, people can't know me not come by if you tell lie. Me just talk that it is and as it might be. A client and farmer was arrested and charged in St. Catherine following the seizure of an illegal gun. You need to clean 31 who is from Maypen, was charged on Monday with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. The police said the seizure was made along Water Lane in Bannister, Old Arbor. According to the police, McLean was sitting in the driver's seat of a Toyota motor car who landed. Hold on. Me think I'm farm when me get the gun for protect, but no, 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 no. A people in Bob the Wag up and go up in there. You see if him the depot in farm with the gun, me that say yo, I'm property my protect. But no 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 no. You don't see I road them catch you with the gun. So what you think him there road with that and no? No people in my plan for go rob man. Anyway, but I tell no more. On the approach of the police, he was reportedly seen removing an object from his waistband and throwing it at his feet. The police said the object was achieved, which turned out to be a Smith and Wesson pistol with a magazine containing 24 rounds of ammo. McLean was subsequently arrested and charged. His court date is yet to be finalized. Hold on there. Hold on a bit. Police only get the food of eat and not eat it. Police them get this food of eat and don't eat. That's the police them not in a sense. Remember the body nasty police and the show weed again, you know. Man nasty police and the show weed again. No, 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 no. Them now see that stuff and you see boy that's something I'm put. You know see there's something illegal. You know see it's not even a knife. Come on, you take a charge for your knife. You understand these days? I say, yo, I just my knife for peel. Me arrange and them look at things and cut up my banana. Cause you know, say me not put my banana in my mouth and bite it. Me have to use my knife and cut it up and then me consume it. Yes. So, police should have stopped this boy. Easy, easy, easy pickings. Police should have stopped this boy. More the people them tell me what the purpose. Yes. Me need enough to tell me. What is the purpose? And the curfew when them drop down and then I'm done. Me no know. So if uno know, uno need to tell me. Them say them drop curfew from 6 p.m. Tuesday, December 14. And it will remain in effect until 6 p.m. Thursday. Yes, people. Me not even want to give one of the boundaries or nothing like that. But what is the purpose of the curfew? This curfew makes no sense, you know. Boots in the streets. That the people they want for the Christmas. Boots in the streets. You understand? Plain clothes boats, boats in a uniform, yes, holy pa boats on the street. Get out, everybody in the street, so make them walk up and down and protect the people them. Protect the good citizens, they be not talk the criminal them. And once you see some boy around slap them with, and the little boy they love the little play play thing on the road. I can tell you this, you never get slapped with, so never very soon you get slapped with. Talk more like a rabbit and rap each other, yes, a little ramping game there, cut it out. Cut it out. Only look at that man and doctor boy. I only may talk to them. That like a ramping something I want to love though. Cut it out. 
Can't say me never had that one on you know. People, there's so much time I want them. Look when them get slapped when you see people come on talk about you and give them in a play. Joke to you about that to me. Tap it. Can't say me never tell you. Know. People, you know one thing with me. Once we get the message for going, you know, we're going to get it. The police themselves tell you to say, don't make criminal rob on Christmas. You understand? But the police them not have no control over that. Me be honest with you. The police them not have no control over that. But they can't say all them want say. You understand? Until them start slap on the criminal them, people will say, all right, we're going to believe you. Know? We're not going to make them rob on Christmas because none of them not going to them But we'll learn a bit. Dennis Brooks say me for talk to you. Know? So this is what I'm going to say. The first thing I would say is that persons are more interested in the path of least resistance. They are more interested in a soft target. So because this is so, you have to harden yourself as a target. Don't be a soft target. This might simply mean to check your locks. If you have defective locks, now is a good time to, to, to change them. If your doors are defective or not um, sturdy, now is a good time to change them. Or you may wish at this time to invest in a home security system. Be more careful about who you give access to your home, especially strangers. At this time of the year, there are many people who are affecting repairs to their home. There are many people who are inviting strangers and sometimes crafty robbers pose as household employees, persons doing yard work, gardeners, even domestic helpers sometimes. Eat that of ears to ear, let them hear. Right now, the Supreme Court began. I'm going to tell you something. All the witness supposed to get charged, though. Yes, I want the Chief Justice have him away. And charge all the witness after time don't give all I testimony them. Yes, people. Him supposed to get charged, too, because he is a criminal. Not was. He is a criminal, too. You understand? Him supposed to get charged, just like him cronies them. Said what I said, and I mean what I said. And I'm not taking back. But I'm going to give you the ball to ball comment, you know. Witness number 14 is a detective inspector attached to the Constabler's Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigation Branch, CTOC. He was facing cross-examination from attorney representing alleged leader of the Wandon faction of the gang, Andre Blackman Bryan. That attorney is Lloyd McFarlane. McFarlane questioned why the police investigators did not caution the witness when he was giving a statement that what he told them could be used against him in court. The witness says he had no indication nor information that the man was anything but a witness. The attorney also insisted the police had no case without the statement of that witness and the first one who taken the stand, also confessing he was a member of the gang. The witness dismissed the claim. The chief justice later intervened, asking the witness why at the time when the former gangster was giving a statement, the police did not stop him from incriminating himself nor caution him. Justice Sykes asked, quote, Man walking station tell police he transported men to commit murders used to be done, made life or death decisions, and no charge, no nothing, he's free as a bird, sleeping soundly at nights? The police witness explained that it was his superiors who had made those decisions and he could not speak on the matter. Similar questions were asked of a previous police witness who would inform the court that the man could face criminal charges in the future based on other ongoing investigations. The court also heard today from another police witness, a detective corporal attached to the constabulary's major investigations division. Her recollection was that she was called to the scene of a double murder in an informal community in Spanish Town St. Catherine called a new nursery. The witness says she recalls seeing the charred remains of two people huddled together among the burned rubble of a house. She says she could see the ribs and the skulls of the deceased and smell their burned flesh. She also says she saw spent casings on the scene. The witness says about a month later, she was present for the autopsy of the deceased at the Archer's funeral home. The witness says two women claiming to be the mothers of the victims were also present and were later swabbed at a JCF's forensic lab in San Andrew. A previous witness, a self-confessed ex-gangster, had earlier detailed how Brian and his cronies had reportedly murdered a couple despite cries for mercy from the woman. That witness says the gangsters had set their house on fire in Twittenham Park, St. Catherine. The witness had said the gangsters murdered the couple when they went in search of a man called Bubba Sparks who was reportedly a top shooter for Tesha Miller.